I went. I managed to go through a, a, a nice long period of meditating every day, not in a grim way. I was really enjoying it, watching it, deepening the thing, and and starting starting to realize that sometimes in the morning I'm already in a fight that hasn't even happened yet, or that the the potential is inside of me to get into conflict before any conflict has happened, and and I. I have compared that to when we know a meteor is has the potential to impact Earth. You can see these meteors from deep inside of yourself zinging out. Uh, but it's not just that. What about the... There's all these things that we have done in the past. And this is... These are these seeds. They, they, it's compared to seeds in Buddhism. So there's all these things we've done with bat, with wrong intention or delusion or sleep. I would compare it more to sleepwalking, like someone in an ambient haze. You've done these ridiculously awful things when you were younger, and then um, sometimes those things come back to you. They come back to haunt you. These are stories and every, you know, ghost stories are all about somebody does some terrible thing and the ghost come comes back to haunt them. And sometimes it's completely out of your control. There's nothing you can do. The thing just emerges again. One great example of it is cancer. If, uh, you know, I, I just read this, stu this study coming out that says that three, something like three fourths of people, regular smokers, will be killed by smoking. Three-fourths, something like that. You know, Leonard Nimoy just passed away and he attributed his lung disorder to smoking. And that's what I mean by these chickens coming home to roost. You get these things that come into your life even as you start mildly waking up. How do we deal with that? How do you... Because my, my reaction to it is just back into the old patterns again, back into anger, back into exploding with rage. I'll be very honest with you. Right before I went on tour, I exploded in rage at my girlfriend and said some of the most terrible things I think I've ever said to anyone in my life outside of my mom. And the fact that you identified that somehow accidentally or as a joke was pretty cool. But how old did you feel when you were saying that shit? Like a baby. You were little, right. And you were enraged, as babies are, because things happen that are out of their control and they don't know how to work the levers yet. And they're trying to get other people to do stuff because they can't do it all themselves. And all they can do is scream and shout at certain points. So there you were. You were triggered and you were back being being young, uh, Duncan, without really any power. That's right. Um, and so then what would you do? You did it? Did you... Um, did it last forever? Did it stay a long time? Did she? It didn't last forever. But now when I now that I, you know, we're working everything out after that. But I look at her and I can see the impact. I can yeah. see the. Yeah, you the... regret it because in a way that unprocessed pain that you had, you put it on her rather than holding it, you know, in some compassionate way in yourself. That's right. And little kids don't know how to do that. And when the when we get triggered from the past kind of traumas, those waves can be huge. Um, one of the good things you are sitting, you know, and practicing mindfulness and compassion is that they come a little bit less, although sometimes they can come still very intensely. But either you clean up the mess quicker afterward because you go, God, I just pooped in the middle of the floor, you know, mm. and it got on everybody now and I have to clean this up and I have to apologize. And there's a consciousness in cleaning up where you say, you know, I was triggered and I wasn't in my right mind. I was a little kid and I was terrified and angry and so forth. And it actually has nothing to do with you. And I'm so sorry I did that. That's a piece, you know, along with the nice dinner, the flowers and the yeah. you know, diamonds or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is that even as you go along, you start to get familiar with those patterns. So when it comes the next time, my guess is because you're starting to make it conscious, you may not lash out in quite the you'll feel the impulse and say, okay, back. I am back being a tiny kid again. The rage is here. Let me do something different with it. Maybe I won't just dump it on the next person. Maybe I'll sit and feel how big it is and imagine it. And if you do let yourself, if you can tolerate it, and mindfulness mm -hmm. teaches you to tolerate being human with all the joys and all the sorrows, when you tolerate it and you say, all right, show me how big you are. And I've sat with people, you know, a thousand times with this kind of process. 
and they're practicing and they'll say, my God, it's huge. I say, you mean like a tornado or a hurricane? They say bigger. I say, how big? Nuclear. It would like blow everything up. Yeah. I said, well, let it blow everything up in your imagination because your imagination is going to hurt anything. It's like going to the movies. And they go, I destroyed everything. It's all dark. It's all black. I'm just my anger, my rage. And I say, okay, we'll sit with that. But it feels like it's all dead. Okay, see how long you want to be dead. Dead, dead, dead. Okay, five minutes pass. You still dead? Yeah, but there's some little green light over in the corner. Well, what's that? I don't want to look at it. Well, wait a little longer. Dead, dead, dead. Okay. I see you're shaking your head. What is it? Oh, there's the green light. Oh, there's a little planet over there. The the shoots are starting to grow. The grass mm. is coming back. If you can tolerate the the rage and the pain, which we all carry, and bow to it and say, yeah, this is part of the ticket of human incarnation, um, and I can hold this too with the loving awareness with the great wise heart of a Buddha that says, oh yeah, this is part of being human, but I don't have to hurt anybody with it. Mm. Then all of a sudden you start to realize even when it comes up, oh yeah, this is workable. Um, so this is the perfect place to practice. Mm. Um, and the idea that you're supposed to perfect yourself so you don't have this stuff coming um, just sets you up for spiritual practice being another judgment game or a grim duty. 